Well, isn't God amazing? Can I, can I get a witness, Paul? Amen. <laughs> oh, we just we just thank God so much for His Word, uh, for His goodness and greatness, His truth that He reveals in it. And uh, well, I just like to start by asking you: Have you ever had a time in your life where you were just in the zone? I mean, you had a job to do, you were at work, and you were like, "Man, I'm here to work." You wanted to do a good job to impress your boss. You were giving your all, and you knew it. Who's had times like this? A few of us. I think we could all use more times like that, um, even if you're one of those very rare and exceptionally efficient and disciplined people. But how about this? Have you ever had a time in your life <laughs> where you had something to do, but you just couldn't be bothered? Is it just me, or is that a silly question to ask a room full of humans? But I think we've all at least once danced the dance of procrastination and lived lazily. We've got something to do, and we could do enough, let alone a good job, but we just don't. And why? Well, let's be honest, because we can't be stuffed. <laughs> See, God has called us to believe in his son. But that, is that all? No. He's also called us to work and to serve. And what we see in these two attitudes to working and serving, we see in these two kinds of servant here in this parable. So there are two ways of being a servant illustrated for us, and Jesus even gives them names. The good and faithful servant on the one hand, and yes, whether we like it or not, the wicked and lazy servant. And this brings us to an important question. Which kind of servant will we be? Will we get stuck in with that man, I'm here to work attitude? Or are we going to be just continuing in the dance of procrastination and living lazily? We need to be real with ourselves and come to terms with how we've responded to God's grace. Can we confidently say, I am a good and faithful servant? Or do we realize perhaps the sobering truth that we have actually been lazy and wicked servants? But we shouldn't stop with a simple assessment, especially if we think we are in the second category. Because even if we think we're wicked and lazy, and yes, as uncomfortable as the term is to accept, it's the one Jesus gives us. So I think we should keep using it. So if we look at ourselves and we think we are wicked and lazy, we shouldn't say, oh no, I've been such a wicked and lazy servant. It's all over for me. God's going to condemn me. I'm going to be cast out. No. But after seeing that we've not served God as we ought to have, we have opportunity to change and to repent, to choose to be good and faithful by his grace, because he is a God of grace. So which kind of servant will we be? Well, before we can answer that with honesty and clarity, we need to better understand the differences between these two kinds of servant. I think when we look deeper into this, we'll see that it's less about all the outward behavior, and it's more about the attitude of the heart. Let's put it another way. Let's see what makes the faithful servant good and what makes the lazy servant wicked. The first difference is this. It is what they do with what they are given. Verse 16 of this passage says, The man who had received five talents went immediately and put them to work, whereas the wicked servant did nothing with what he was given. The good and faithful servant here has been not hesitant at all, but immediately diligent in putting his money to work. The wicked servant wasted the money. By doing nothing with it, it was a wasted opportunity. He didn't use it for the purpose the master gave it to him for. So likewise, when we put our faith in Jesus, it automatically means we become Christ's servants, entrusted with his kingdom, the church. And we've all been given ways of growing it to return it to God increased. And that's important to note, that the kingdom of God isn't just given to us for it to just sit still and do nothing. It's to increase and be returned to him. All of us have ability and skill, spiritual gifts, and it's all to build his church. It's what it's all about. You know, some of you have a real heart of service, whether it's cleaning toilets, building extensions, cooking people meals, or doing amazing baking, or whatever your, whatever your talent is. You just love to serve, and your heart is in serving in whichever way you can. And that's amazing. That's a God-given gift to you. Some of you are incredibly practical. Some of you have incredible skills of business and building and, and thinking and engineering. That's also amazing. Some of you are so, so 
profound with your words, so good with your words that you can encourage and inspire even the most lowly and sorrowful spirit. We all have gifts, but how do we use these gifts and what will we do with them? You know, in moving to Nelson, I've had the privilege of meeting many amazing people. Can I get a witness? (laughs) Amen. I've had the privilege of meeting many amazing people. But you know, there's one young man I think of in particular when when I think on these things. I heard his testimony and, and it goes like this. He was in deep in addiction to drugs. And this wasn't just light stuff, it was pretty hardcore. He was partying hard in the alcohol scene, partying scene. His life was a bit of a mess. But then when he met Jesus, it turned his life totally upside down. It turned his life totally upside down. He was set free from his addictions and is today the most, if not one of the most Christian, passionate Christians I have personally met. Straight away, he is sold out for God. He hits the street, preaching the gospel to people, praying for people, getting words for people from the Holy Spirit, and even healings. This is a man who, upon meeting Jesus Christ, has not hesitated, but immediately and diligently put himself to the cause of building God's kingdom. But the most noteworthy thing about my friend here is he has gifts from God, his musical and lyrical talent. This is a gift given him by God, something he has put to work for increasing God's kingdom, making songs and raps and melodies about Jesus so that people on the street can be exposed to the gospel and increase the kingdom, maybe even enter in. This is an example, I believe, of rightly responding to God's grace and being a good and faithful servant. But the focus, I'll remind us here, is less about all these outward things done. Sometimes it feels like there are some people who've just got this mountain of good things and it's like, well, they're okay, but but I'm not because I don't do that. But no, each one of us has our own way of responding to God's grace. What I'll remind us of is that It's the attitude of the heart. The attitude of my friend's heart here is one that is eager to serve and increase God's kingdom. How about us? Have we ever felt that passion? Have we ever felt that burning in our hearts to do more for God, for his kingdom, his church? That's great, because that's the heart that God looks for. All you need to do now is is look and say, what has God given me? What has God given me? And how can I use that? to build God's kingdom. That's the first difference between these two kinds of servant. What do they do with what they're given? What do they do with what they are given? The next difference, the other difference, is who comes first. And this, I think, is the most profound reflection of someone's heart that there is. Actions do speak of the heart, But actions also speak of who comes first. Verse 20 says this, The man who had received five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. Look at his actions in this passage. Look at these words. Who comes first in the mind of the servant? First, he without hesitation puts himself wholly to the task of being responsible with his master's money, putting it to work to increase it. And now he stands before him to return the hard-earned profits. This servant put his master first. But the wicked servant had himself in mind. Listen to these words. I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. This servant is just interested in self-preservation. He figured that he didn't need to put his money to work. He didn't even put it into the hands of the bankers. He figured he could just sit on his laurels and just return the money. But that was unacceptable and showed that the whole time his heart was not set on the benefit of his master, but actually on himself. He didn't want to lift a finger for his master. I wonder, where are our hearts? Who is first? Is it Jesus or is it us? What are we more interested in? It's a good question. Serving Jesus by building his kingdom, his church, or doing nothing for God, but living for ourselves? Surely the change 
that God brings about when we put our faith in Jesus is one of the heart. From being self-centered to being God-centered. From being lazy to being faithful. From being wicked to being good. From being afraid to being diligent. This is the change seen in my friend's life. His life is totally turned around. Hearing who he was before he met Christ and seeing what he is since is an inspiring thing. I think it's a testimony to the change of heart that awaits all of us who respond to Jesus' offer of grace, of forgiveness, of transformation. In everything my friend does, he is always making it about God and not about himself. You see it in him that he just desires to love and serve God in everything he does, the way he speaks, the way he acts, where he invests his time. There's a, there's a real heart change you see in him. There's something really important we need to think about, about this wicked servant. Because when we think about it, what is the difference really between the wicked servant and no servant at all? What's the difference? Is there a difference? Well, neither one does anything. Neither one works and lives for the benefit of their master. Neither one increases what they've been given. If that's the case, as as hard as it may sound, what is the difference between a professing Christian who does nothing for God's kingdom and an unbeliever who does nothing for God's kingdom? There's no difference. There's no difference. In fact, the parable recognizes this in verse 30. Because it shows that the servant is judged and cast out just like one who will not have the grace and forgiveness of Jesus. Because the wicked servant has shown by his actions, by his heart, that he is really no servant at all. His heart hasn't responded to God's grace. It hasn't changed from serving self to serving God. What makes the faithful servant good? What makes the lazy servant wicked? What makes the faithful servant good is their diligence to serve God from the heart. It's about the heart. To increase what they've been given for his kingdom. To look at what God promises. Because look at what God promises. He who has will be given more. But what makes the lazy servant wicked? Their unwillingness to do anything with what they've been entrusted. Or to seek to have something to offer in return. And look at God's promise here. Take the one talent from him. Give it to the one with ten talents. I think we see here that it can be likened to having opportunities. Those who are responsible and diligent in obeying God and taking all the opportunities they have to build his kingdom, God's going to give them more opportunities. The more you serve God, the more God gives you opportunities to serve him. But if you have an opportunity to serve God and you don't take it, well, he'll take that opportunity and he'll give it to someone who will use it. So which kind of servant will we be? Will we count the cost? Will we say yes to Jesus? Will we be good and faithful servants? One who puts God first, serves him diligently to build his kingdom, his church. If so, I've got good news for you. Rejoice! Because when Christ returns, he will say to you, he'll actually say to you, you'll stand before Jesus and he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. There's an exclamation mark there. He might might yell it with you. Well done. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. But, or will we be one who puts themselves first? Who does nothing with what they've been given for God? But I do want to say something. If you believe this is you, do be sobered by this. For we do see that this servant will be judged. And that is a scary thing. But don't despair. Please don't despair. Don't panic. Because our God is a God of grace. God invites you by his grace and forgiveness so that you can change and have peace with him. And we must remember always, once again, that our peace with God rests on Jesus Christ. It's not how much we work. It's the heart from which our actions come. And the Holy Spirit changes our hearts. So I encourage you, if your heart burns this morning to respond to Jesus and his grace, to be a good and faithful servant to him, we have prayer at the end of the service just over here. And I invite you to come and be prayed for. 
And I'd encourage you to seek and meditate on how you can build his kingdom with what God has given you. I'd like to finish on, on this note. Let's seek Jesus to be good and faithful servants for him, to put God first in our lives. Let's build his kingdom and let's rejoice, rejoice that Christ himself will invite us into eternal joy when he returns. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this joy you offer us, Lord. Thank you so much for your word, that it convicts us, that it challenges us, but also that it encourages us and gives us great reason to be joyful. We pray, Lord, that we would listen to your spirit this morning, that we would hear within what you are speaking to us, where you are leading us. We thank you that you are a God of grace who invites us to yourself through Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we have this amazing opportunity to serve you, that it's not a have to, it's a get to. It's not a have to, it's a get to. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I